Well, it's another election year, and the media are talking about the primaries, about Santorum, um, Gingrich, Huntsman, Romney, uh, Perry, um, and I'm a, I'm a Huntsman man. Uh, he is the one uh, politician uh, that I think will get me to vote Republican again. Um, and the last time I voted for Republican was in 2000. But you know what I'm really getting upset about is the media. The media is saying, who will the evangelicals vote for? Um, the uh, evangelical leaders are suggesting that uh, supporters of Rick Perry and Newt Gingrich should put their votes and their support and their money behind Rick Santorum. I mean, I was listening to a CNN report on inside politics, and like every two sentences they use the word evangelical. I mean, it's like these people don't know what evangelical means. I mean, usually there goes like mainline uh, Christianity, Lutheran, uh, Presbyterian, uh, Methodist, uh, Evangelican, uh, Congregationalist, and Evangelicalism. No, there's mainline and there's fundamentalism. Evangelical means to spread the good news of the Lord. That we are no longer slaves to sin. And there is no good news with these people. Jesus came to save the world, not to condemn it, but these people are condemning the world. They are judging the outside. They are condemning in a hypocritical fashion um, they are supporters of a governmental system that is basically legalized bribery. Um, they believe that corporations have as much rights as a human being. And they support right-wing economic policies that reward these people who line their pocketbooks and basically get them re-elected. Politicians are always in a re-election mode. And it's not just Republicans, it's Democrats as well. But back to my original point, evangelical. I am an evangelical. I am a mainline Chris, uh, Christian. I go to uh, uh, a Presbyterian church. Uh, but I believe that the good news has to be spread, and you witness the good news both by words and by deeds. And a lot of these people, like I said, they don't have good news. And what is the good news? Um, this is Uh, from Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. Uh, Luke 8, 1, after uh, the parable of the sower, after this, Jesus traveled from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The good news that we are no longer, like I said, slaves to God. I mean, Acts 20, 24, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Now, this is where I think a lot of uh, right-wing uh, Christians get it wrong. Um, grace is not... Grace is a free gift. Um, you do not earn grace. Grace is given by God and manifested through faith and through righteous living. Um, it's not a get-out-of-jail-free card. It's not a badge that says, I am better than you. I have the authority to judge you. We don't have the authority to judge any unbeliever. We don't have a, a, uh, the ability to judge other people. We have the ability to discern and judge fellow Christians who are acting outside the faith.
I'm sorry. Um, this is really, I'm passionate. I'm very passionate about this. Um, what does God demand? What is manifesting of a righteous life being born again, being born of above? Uh, you, you can't see the kingdom of God unless you're born again, and that means you are seeing through eyes of God. You are living a righteous God. You're no longer living for the pocketbook. You're no longer living for your ideology, your politics. You're no longer living for selfish desires. You're living for God and for his kingdom. And we are, we do have sinful bodies and we will battle against it. I mean, Paul said, the thing that I do not want to do, I do. And the things that I want to do, I do not do. Who will save me from this body of sin? And that's what God does. And God walks with us and God grows us. And we are I, th I think the word is sanctification, possibly sa sanctified, but what does God want of us? Uh, Zechariah 7, 9, this is what the Lord Almighty said, administer true justice, so mercy, and compassion to one another. And a lot of these leaders are, like one of my favorite uh, chapters is Matthew tw uh, 23, 23. It's a great counterpoint to uh, Matthew 5 to 7. Um, because Matthew 5 to 7 is basically Jesus' man kingdom manifesto. And yes, we cannot live 100% uh, um, like that uh, uh, because it, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be 100%. It's not going to be the kingdom of God made fully manifest until Jesus comes back and we have the millennial kingdom. But if we're not living for the kingdom today... Who's to say we'll be admitted in the kingdom after he comes back? I mean, will we say, oh, I believe, uh, 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 I believe in God. I, uh, uh, I, um, uh, we cast out demons uh, in, in your name. And, and remember, uh, in Matthew 7, you say, verily, verily, I never knew you. Go away from me, evildoers. And uh, uh, verse that it's often used, and I really like Micah 6, 8. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. There is no mercy with these. I mean, Rick Santorum basically said that if you have pre-existing conditions, you should either pay a huge premium, or you should be denied health care because of poor life choices. I mean, kids who have cancer, uh, kids who have childhood diabetes, even people who, like, maybe have made some poor, like, health uh, 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 decisions, ate, ate bad or something. But you're basically saying, oh, you had bad life decisions, you deserve to die. Because if you don't have health insurance and if you suffer from these disorders, you're probably going to die. But does he care? No. Is he a peacemaker? No. And I do believe there are some times when you have no other choice but to go to war. I believe World War II was an example of that. If, if we didn't go into war, Hitler would have taken all of Europe. Japan would have taken all of uh, Asia. Uh, and basically we wouldn't be as a nation for today. Um, but I also don't believe you should glorify war and basically wish for war. I, I mean, like, and the thing is, if we do attack Iran, it's going to be war. I mean, you can say, no, no, we're just going to bomb the nuclear, weapon, uh, nu nuclear facilities and it will be okay. Uh, first of all, uh, they will um, close the streets of Hermes, which will basically cut oil from the rest of the world and they may not have a nuclear weapon now but who's to say but but who's to say that maybe uh dan carlin uh uh common sense podcast which is one of my uh favorite uh non-religious podcasts I mean, basically said who's to say that they didn't slip some money to a soldier uh guarding um 
a Russian nuke, uh, and who the government couldn't pay uh, their, uh, 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 their pittance of a wage, and basically, if we do attack them, they might use it against us. The thing is, what we want to do is fund the Green Revolution. And that's one of the things that I think Obama dropped the ball quite seriously. So, that's neither here nor there, but I'm just saying that is not evangelical. There's not in fundamentalism, because the fundamentals of Christianity are humility, are compassion, are love, are righteous living, and selfishness, selflessness. And these Anwan acolytes, uh, they view political selflessness as a liability, as a weakness. Uh, I'm going to... Um, I am going to leave you with this. Romans 6, 8. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. That is one of the promises of the good news. But the second one is, 11. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of weakness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have brought from death to life, and offer every part of yourself to Him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall so no longer be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. God knew... God no, knew that we could not achieve righteousness on our own, that we are sinful, sinful creatures, and no matter how hard we try, we will fall flat on our face. Our self-righteousness are filthy rags, but with God's grace, we are no longer slaves to sin. We are children of God. We are no longer greedy. We are no longer sexual exploitators. We are no longer warmongers. We no longer live and play by the rules of the world. That is the good news. That is being an evangelical. And so I am going to write letters, emails, Go on Facebook pages of CNN, Time, Huffington Post, etc., and say, No! This is not evangelical. You have a wrong perception and view of what evangelical is. I don't want the world to be as rotten as it is with economic and sexual immorality. And that's the thing that conservatives and I share, but they're going about it in an awful, awful way. To fight sexual immorality, to fight immorality, they are becoming immoral themselves. They are looking at one aspect of, of, of sin of, of the outside while ignoring their sinful nature on the inside, and that is a very dangerous path to be on my friends. So anyway, I just needed to say this because I felt like beating my head against a brick wall every time uh, the media s says evangelical. Bob L Van der Plaats is not an evangelical. Rick Perry is not an evangelical. Rick Santorum is not an evangelical. And I find really very interesting, <clears throat> uh, 40 years ago, evangelical fundamentalist Christians would uh, basically be against Rick Santorum because he's a Catholic. Uh, now all that all that feeling is against Mormonism, which I, I believe Mormonism is uh, uh, the fourth Abrahamic religion. I don't believe it's a path to God, but I don't believe they're demonic or evil anyway. Um, and right-wing Protestants and right-wing Catholics are marrying in an unholy matrimony uh, which I do believe might become the Whore Babylon, a church that worships money and military might and not God. I hope this was food thought. God bless you guys.